Hi, my name is Sienna. I live in Victoria, British Columbia, and this is our English 11 classes project on Shakespeare. This year we read Macbeth, and along with this project, we have also written a test and an in-class essay. We created this project using the school iPads on the app Explain Everything, and this is the last part of our Shakespeare unit. For this project, each student provides information on Shakespeare, chooses a significant passage from Shakespeare's play Macbeth, and explains why they chose that passage. Macbeth is a play about a talented Scottish general who receives prophecies from three witches, one of which says that he will become king of Scotland one day. Right after Macbeth receives his prophecies, one comes true. Driven at first by the ambition of his wife, Macbeth murders Duncan, the current king of Scotland, and takes the throne for himself. Everything Macbeth does after this event is to keep the throne. However, in the end, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth lose the throne and both end up dead. Shakespeare was the third oldest sibling out of eight. At the time, Shakespeare was very lucky to have lived well into his adulthood since the plague swept across the countryside. However, three of his sisters were not so lucky and died during their childhood. Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway in 1582 and they had three children together. Shakespeare has no direct descendants up to this day. The farthest his line went was his grandchildren. Shakespeare was very well educated, with a vocabulary of over double as big as the average university students. However, some of his words have changed meaning in the past 500 years. Shakespeare was also a poet, and therefore used many poetic devices to shape his work. These are some of the reasons why we have some issues reading Shakespeare's work. At the same time, however, the communicative power of Shakespeare's language is the biggest reason why his work is timeless. Shakespeare wrote Macbeth in 1606 to please the new King of England, King James I, who was of Scottish descent. Macbeth is a play that favors King James's ancestors and displays honor and power for his new leadership, therefore giving off the message of those who try to undermine or overthrow King James will not succeed, as proven by history. King James was a big supporter of the arts and therefore renamed Shakespeare's company to the King's Servants. One source Shakespeare used when writing Macbeth is Holinshed's Chronicles of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Shakespeare's plays were performed in the Globe Theatre. At the time, the Globe Theatre had a very elaborate setup. For example, the theatre hung different peplared flags depending on the type of play that was being performed that day. Another example is where people sat in the Globe Theatre reflected their social status. There was even a system for the audience to show if they liked the play or not. If the audience was entertained by the play, they would laugh. However, if the audience thought the play was badly performed, they would hiss. The Globe Theater was open year-round depending on the weather and was only shut down three times because of the plague. For my significant passage, I chose two scenes that I feel best show the theme of ambition. The first passage has Lady Macbeth telling Macbeth to act innocent, but to actually be willing to commit horrible acts. In the second passage, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth have switched roles, and Macbeth is the one saying they need to hide their true feelings. The first passage I chose is from Act 1, Scene 5, lines 61 to 66. Lady Macbeth is speaking. Your face, my thane, is a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time, bear welcome in your eye. Your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. The second passage I chose is from Act 3, Scene 2, Lines 30 to 35, and Macbeth is speaking. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence both with eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must slave our honors in these flattering streams and make our faces visards to our hearts, disguising what they are. I chose these two passages because they clearly show that Macbeth and Lady Macbeth's roles have switched. In the first passage, Lady Macbeth was the ambitious one, hungry for power, and she is even willing to kill for it. Lady Macbeth tells Macbeth to hide what they are planning to do by looking innocent. Macbeth was passive and did as his wife said. In the second passage, Macbeth is the one with ambition, telling Lady Macbeth that they have to disguise and hide what they feel in their hearts. In this passage, Lady Macbeth is passive and paranoid. At first, she tries to do as Macbeth said and act like nothing was wrong, 
However, as the play progressed, she felt so guilty that she started sleepwalking and sleep-talking, unknowingly spilling her secrets to a doctor and a woman. A couple of acts later, Lady Macbeth kills herself out of guilt. In conclusion, I enjoyed working on this project. In my opinion, the most interesting thing I learned about Shakespeare is that he was a smart man. Shakespeare was not only book smart, but street smart as well. Writing Macbeth was one of the smartest things he did in his life. Shakespeare wrote Macbeth to get in the new king's good graces, and it worked. The new King James loved Shakespeare and his group so much that he renamed Shakespeare's company. In terms of being book smart, Shakespeare was easily able to completely switch the personalities of Lady Macbeth and Macbeth. Even without the passages I chose that show exactly when Macbeth and Lady Macbeth switched roles, Shakespeare worked in subtle changes throughout the, the play, such as actions rather than words to show that their characters were changing.